Let me introduce you to another workbench in Katia V5 called Drafting. This workbench is used to create drawing views that contain all the technical information required to communicate how an object is built or functions. This slide shows the most frequently used toolbars in the Drafting workbench. The drawing toolbar gives us access to commands like New Sheet, New View, and Instantiate 2D Document. Next, from the Views toolbar, we can insert various views like projections, sections, details, clippings, and break view. We can add dimensions and tolerances to the views from the Dimensioning toolbar. Next is the Annotations toolbar, using which we can add text, symbols, tables, and add leaders on the views. Next is the Dress Up toolbar, which allows us to highlight axes and threads, area fill, etc. Let's look at the next slide, which is showing the drawing of the bush holder part body that we designed. As we can see in the drawing, there is a top view at the bottom left side. There is a section view AA that cuts the top view through the centers of the two bushes. On the right side is another section view BB that cuts through the center of bush 2 and the center of one of the corner bushes. And lastly, on the top right corner is the isometric view. We can also see that all the required dimensions are shown in the top view and the section views. A designer and or a manufacturer should be able to deduce all the dimensions required to make this model from this drawing. Let's jump into creating this drawing and learning the drafting commands as we proceed. First, from the path window, I can click on File from the menu bar and select New. A small window opens at the bottom right corner of the Katia window. Here, I can select Drawing under the list of types to open a new drawing. I will click on OK to confirm this command selection. Another window opens up, which is called New Drawing Definition window. Here, you can choose a drawing standard from the drop-down list. I will select the ISO standard. You can also choose the sheet style, whether you want the sheet to be a portrait or landscape. I will select A2 size for the sheet style and click on OK to exit this window. This action opens up a new drawing sheet in a separate window inside Katia. First, I shall save this drawing document in a preferred location. The file extension of a drawing in Katia is CAD Drawing. Here, you can access all the toolbars we talked about earlier. From the drawing toolbar, we can see that there are commands to open a new sheet to create a new view and to instantiate 2D components. Instantiate 2D component command helps to create new instances of existing views. The next step is to place a view. To do this, I can go to Insert, then click on Views, then click on Projections, and then click on the front view. We can also access this command from the Views toolbar shortcut. Now, I will click on the Window menu bar and then select the part model bush holder. This action will allow me to switch to the part body window, where we can select the view we want to place in the graphics area. I can change the view as desired using the views toolbar. Once I place the mouse pointer on the front plane, a small oriented preview window shows up at the bottom right corner of the Katia window. If this is the view you want to place, you can click on any face of the model and the view appears in the drawing sheet. Also, the part model window switches back to the drawing sheet automatically. On the top right corner of the drawing sheet, you can see a blue colored knob called Orientation Circle. It helps us orient a view as required. I can click on the anti clockwise arrow at the center and observe how the smaller green knob outside rotates along with the view. You can also directly move the green knob by left-clicking your mouse to rotate the view. Now, we can see that the top view of the part model is placed in the center of the drawing sheet. The dotted line around the view is called the view frame. It helps with picking a certain drawing view and moving from its position. This frame can be enabled or disabled from the properties window. The properties window can be accessed if we right-click on the view and then click on the Properties option. The Properties window can also be opened if we press Alt plus Enter after selecting the view. While we are in the Properties window, we can also see that there is a Lock view option. 
which allows us to freeze the view from moving from its position or from making any changes. Visual Clipping checkbox defines whether a visual clipping is to be performed or not on the view. If you ever want to know the function of a certain feature in Katia, you can click on the question mark on the definition window as shown. Then click on the feature like so. This will pop open the definition of the selected feature. On this view tab of the view properties, you can also choose options for scale and orientation, dress up features, modify view name etc. We shall use some of these features as we go. Under dress up options, I am going to select the checkbox for center line and then click on the apply button. You can see that center lines appeared for all the bushes in the top view. These center lines will help guide us in placing the dimensions. Let's click on OK to exit this window. In the Katia drawing sheet, the mouse controls are the same as those in the part window. I will zoom in on the view. Then I will select the dimensions command from the dimensioning toolbar. Now I will left click on the vertical center line of bush 1 and then left click on the vertical center line of bush 2 as shown. You can see that a dimension of 60 appears in the view. If I left click on the drawing sheet like so, the dimension will be placed. Did you notice how the selected center lines turned orange in color? Meaning that those are the lines that are dimensioned. You may pick the dimension line to move its position. Next, I shall double click on the dimensions command from the dimensioning toolbar to keep it active. I will click on the vertical center line of bush 2 and then click on the vertical center line of the corner bush as shown. A dimension of 17 appears on the sheet. Next, I intend to show the distance between the center line of corner bush and the right end of the base. So, I will select the center line of the corner bush as shown. Then, when I click on the arc of the base, I am unable to see the preview of the desired dimension. At this point, if I right click anywhere, a list of options pop up, from which I will click on Extension Lines Anchor. Next, I will hover on the first extension line to see that Anchor 2 is selected. I will now hover on the second extension line option and then click on Anchor 1. The dimension preview is still not satisfactory, so I will repeat the above mentioned steps and select Anchor 4 as shown. Once I see a preview of the correct dimension, I will place it on the sheet. Let us now define the horizontal distance between the centers of corner bushes using the same steps as we just did. A dimension of 114 appears. If you dimension the distance between the horizontal center lines of both the bushes as shown, it would be 15 mm. Note that the drawing sheet adopts the units of the dimension values from the part models. Let's apply vertical dimensions of the base as shown. Next, let's move on to placing radial dimensions. To do this, I will double click on radius dimension in the dimensioning toolbar. Next, I will click on the arc of the base to place the radius of the arc. R100 appears on the drawing sheet. I shall place R18 and R10 dimensions also as shown. Now, let's switch to diameter dimensions from the dimensioning toolbar. Let's place the outer diameter of bush 1 which is 60 mm by clicking on the outer edge of the bush 1. Then, I will place the inner diameter of bush 1 which is 35 mm as seen. Next, I will place the outer diameter of bush 2. Dia 82 appears in the view. If I want to place a diameter dimension for a construction element, I can use the geometry creation toolbar as shown here to draw a circle. Since it is a solid circle, I will right click on the circle and click on properties and then under graphic tab, I shall change the line type to dotted as shown. 
I will click on OK to exit the properties window. I will now apply the diameter dimension as 61 for this circle. You can change the precision of the dimension value from the numerical properties toolbar as shown. Next, from the annotations toolbar, I shall select text with leader command and then click on the M12 hole as shown. As you can see, a text editor window opens up. Here, I will type in 6 into M12, which indicates that there are 6 M12 standard holes. I will click on OK to exit this command. While placing the leader, if it is snapping to a point in the view, you may press and hold the Shift key to avoid the snapping. I have now completed dimensioning the entities in this view. Let's move on to placing another view. I will now create a section view. To do this, I will select the offset section view from the views toolbar. If I hover on the horizontal axis of the bush 1, Katia displays a guideline while placing the starting point of the section line. I shall next left click on the blue vertical axis and then click at the center of the coordinate axis as shown. Next, I shall use the guideline to click outside the base arc as shown. Once I double left click the mouse, the section line places its end point. This section line is going to cut through the top view at the center of bush 1 and bush 2. Now, the section view can be projected either above or below the top view. So, I shall place it above by left clicking on the drawing sheet. In the section view, I shall go to the properties and I shall uncheck the fillets checkbox under dress up in the view tab. Can you see that the lines displaying the fillet operation are now gone? I will click on OK to exit this window. The black boundary that you see around the views is your drawing page. If it is seen as too small to fit in your views, you may click on File from the menu bars and then click on the Page Setup option. In the Page Setup Definition window, you may change the sheet style. I will change the sheet style to A1 ISO. I can double click on the section view outer frame to move it from its position. Let us select the Dimensions command from the Dimensioning toolbar and place the distances as shown. The diagonal lines that you see are called hatching lines, which imply that hatched space is where the solid material is and the rest of the space is hollow. Next, watch me apply the radial dimensions of R2, R3 and R10 as applicable. Moving on, I will select Diameter Dimensions and apply the diameters D28 and D40 as shown. Next, I will select the Chamfer Dimension command from the same toolbar and use the Length X Angle option from the Tools palette. And then click on the Chamfer area. As you can see, 
the chamfer dimension with length and angle appear. All the dimensions for this section view, AA, are now placed. Let us create another section view and dimension the same. To do this, first I will double click on the top view to activate this view. Next, I will zoom in on the top view. I will now select Offset Section View from the Views toolbar. Observe how I am placing the starting point of the selection line outside the base using the center line as a guide. Next, I will left click on the bottom of Bush 2 as seen and then cut through the center of the corner bush as shown. I will double click outside the base to specify the end point of the section line. In case you placed the section line incorrectly, you may press the escape key on your keyboard to exit the section view command and then restart the command. Now, I shall project the section view to the right of the top view as shown. I shall give the distance dimensions by selecting the dimensions command from the dimensioning toolbar. The height of the corner bush is 35 mm. I will add the whole dimensions as shown. Next, I shall place the radial dimension of R2 as shown. I will add the chamfer dimension of 1.5 into 45 degrees like we did earlier. Lastly, I shall use the diameter dimension to place the D12 slot in the corner bush. Now, I shall right click on the D12 dimensional value and then click on properties option. In the dimension line tab, I shall change the representation field from regular to two parts. Next, I shall click on the dimension texts tab and click on associated texts field and type in 4x. If I click on the apply button, I can see that the dimension value has been updated to 4 into dia 12. It means that the slot diameter on the 4 corner bushes is 12 mm. I click on OK to exit this window. All the dimensions for this view are now placed. Next, I shall click on the isometric view command from the views toolbar. I will go to the part body window and change the view to isometric view from the views toolbar. Once I click on a plane of the part body, Katia automatically places the isometric view in the drawing sheet. I can use the blue knob here to modify the orientation of the view as desired. All the views are in place now. The drawing sheet is now complete. There are other view types like detail view, broken view, clipping view etc. Let me demonstrate a few more drawing views here. Detail view is a display of partial description of an object. You can obtain a detail view by using a circle as a callout around the area you want to scale up and then creating a view. When a specific object is too long for a drawing sheet, you can use the broken view option to dimension the distance from one end to another. Clipping view helps with clipping circular or polygonal profiles to crop the views from the drawing sheet. There would be instances where the drawing details would not fit in one sheet. In such situations, you may use the new sheet option to create an additional drawing sheet. While making the drawing of bush holder, we covered the topics related to the drawing sheets, views, properties and dimensions. I hope you learned new and exciting things about part design and drawing in this session. We shall learn more features and capabilities of Katia V5 in our next session.